So here we are today, guys, at the 7M GTE, um, 7G rather, and I am going to strip it apart, ready for skimming. So, first things first, I'm going to whip this to strip it off, and I'm going to whip this off and everything else. Let's get some tools out, shall we? Let's have a lucky lucky. Um, right, so, pen here and magnet stick. So, let's whip that off, that's uh, 12. 12 and 3 oaks, that'll do. Put that off. And I'll put everything aside and I'll put all the bolts where they need to go, etc. etc. Pull this out. That's the speed this stuff up because uh, getting bolts out is obviously not going to be that exciting. It's fine. So that gear there goes on the gear on the cam which we'll see afterwards so they need to come out. I'm going to put this bolt back in there so we don't lose it. And that can go in back afterwards. Go back in after. I've got all new seals to this head as well, all new seals for everything which I'll obviously bring along. Um, we'll put that up. So for now I'm going to put this on the front. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in every store. Got myself some pliers. Those there, I don't know if there's an end to it, but I should probably put it. Probably write a H on there for the head, shouldn't I? Head end. See that? Head. Right, next I'm going to do is possibly. Uh, let's see, I'm going to whip out the head studs. Uh, the cam's out for that. So, whip the cam gears off now. They look like 14s. What impact impacted them to be Okay, got a spanner there, 24, should do the drop. Uh, yeah, I don't know what, what it is, but it's just it there very much. So, <laughs> <laughs> that is tight. It's very tight. Oh, blow me. I need a better impact, John. This impact gun is clear, this impact gun is clearly not man enough. So I'm gonna have to do it. Alright, back to make a little invention here. Bit of a handle on the handle and right. Next one, that was good. Yeah, a bit of leverage on it is what we needed. It's mega tight that one is. Jesus. Oh, Turn down a bit to get a bit more better, better leverage on it, maybe. That is a super light, so a big impact on that would be nice, but I don't know if one. I'll try and find one. I have just remembered I've got my big impact in the uh, van, so I'm going to get it, and <laughs> that'll come straight off. Give me a second. Alright, well I've just been given an air impact gun, so put that on the airline and let's see, let's see how we get on. Zoom. 
zoom zoom. Where has it got the footage? Oh, there it is. Let's see how that does. See which way it's spinning first as well. <coughs> Wrong way. <coughs> there we go. Let's get ready. <coughs> well, would you look at that? Come straight out now, didn't it? Very good. Pick up. Ooh la la. Right. I'll get them off in a sec. Get this one back off. I bet you can see it when I can go on to. A little shock therapy. Get a little man on the really good handles. Just do it. This is a... It's all scanned. Put B on there. fuel rail so I'm going to spin this round. And we've got here just three 12 mils. Oh, to get them. There you go there. And you wipe this up there. Dirty. Bleed again. So yeah, on these turtles, sometimes I've got fuel damper. That's a fuel damper there. It's not needed. To stop like pulsating from the fuel pump or whatever in the rail, um, but yeah, it's not needed. So just get these out for a second. You can delete them if you want. They're not really known to go wrong there. Um, and then obviously you've got the fuel pressure regulator in the rail. Okay. Right, cheese off. Let's get that little rubber out of there. We left that one in there. Let's get that out with. Uh, don't want to damage it, so let's get out with this little plastic. And I'm going to just pop these bolts back in this rail here. You can see that? Popping these bolts back in there. Whoop. All in there, leave it like that. Now, when we put those in, we're going to make sure, obviously, that they're all nice and clean, got new rubbers on them, because these are ones that like to tend to leak, and the top ones as well. Yeah, they're all good. So, you don't want to be doing this job twice, obviously. We've got all new seals for them. Now, now we're at this stage. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to number. They have got numbers on already. See, that one says E7, E6. I don't know if you can see that. E7 on top, he's all seven, and this one's like intake seven, and they're all numbered all the way up to intake two, and that's obviously intake one, and that's obviously exhaust one, it's got it there. So I'm gonna get them all off. I'm gonna I'm gonna number them anyway, just so it's uh, pretty easy to see. So where are we? 
They've all got arrows on them, showing you they point towards the cam gear. So they all go that way, you can't put them on reverse. I've seen some people do that. I've seen them mix them up as well, but the thing is they're, they're line honed, so you do that and you'll mess them up. Yeah, these look alright, they're all looking good, not again. You can tell a lot of the condition of the engine if you look at here and see any like scoring or anything like that, but no, these look alright. That one there labelled by oh, that's the intake cam. And these cams will get it all the game. This one's the one that um, tells a dizzy when to fire. Distributor, when to fire. Again, E for exhaust cam. Now, I'll get my magnet stick. Well, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to clean up the tops of the um, buckets. I need to pull the buckets out, I'm going to clean up the tops of the buckets and I'm going to write on them which ones they are. So that was the intake side because you've got the new tails up as well. Don't forget them, you get them also otherwise. That's the fuel rail. skimmed and we'll be getting uh, bathed. Six, 
because the shims are different sizes for each valve and that will give you the clearance on the cam so if that's not correct one will be too close I might be touching the cam the, the, the valves won't open and close properly and the engine either won't run or run like crap we'll end up bending the valve or something so really important to get to get to get those labeled correctly I'm going to label these ones now uh, that is exhaust one Exhaust two, exhaust three, in four, in five, in six, in seven, in eight, in nine, in ten, in eleven, and in twelve. Right, let's put them out one by one. Go try and put white pipe on there. Okay. And that's how they're made up. You've got a a bucket, right, and then you've got the shim on the top. Now, the problem with this design is it is an old design, but if you're high revving or anything like that, or, about, uh, or your um, valve clearances are off or anything, you know, you can chuck the cam, can, like this will like, lift up, and you can get uh, the cam which can chuck the uh, shim off the top of the bucket, and that's not good, obviously. So that's one out. Let's get them all out. Let's get them all out here. I'm It's a good engine, it's a good engine. So, right, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to whip off these pick up points and um, that'll be it for today I think. Engine head stripped down, leave the uh, valves in them, but it's strong now aren't it? Mm. Right, let's see what I've got. I've got I've got a 14 mil and another 14 mils, two 14 mils to go on. So got the socket. ones must have already been taken out. Oh, I've got a new ARP bought and I bought a HKS metalhead gasket as well. Happy days. The middle one, you physically see the pitting on it where it's broken there, right in the middle uh, where the head gasket broke, it's been travelling across. These ones are still sealed, but I mean, that one's not far behind. This one's not far behind. So, yeah, definitely did need a head gasket job. I'm going to skim this, make it all clean, and um, then we are going to fit the new HKS head gasket and 
that we can lay our piece and get it all back together and run it. Hopefully run like an absolute peach. Alright, thank you for watching guys. Like, share and subscribe. See you back for the next one. Cool video. Cheers.